Greetings, YouTubians, and welcome back to Wayne Sharp World, where today I have got a long one for you guys, but it's a subject that I've wanted to revisit for a very long time now, and it's covering one of the biggest topics that can be a determining factor in which knife we buy. Now, I know some of you guys will say, oh, I just want to get the knife that's best for me. Well, and that's cool, and a lot of people do. I'm not making fun of anyone, but one of the biggest determining factors that we will always factor into buying a knife, especially if you're a knife nut or if you're well acquainted into the knife community, you want a knife with amazing action. Buttery, smooth, perfect detent, all the good things. That is one of the things that make a knife super special and it can also make it extremely unique, which we're gonna touch on some of those in this video as well. But a couple things before we get into this list. I tried not to think too much about this one. Sometimes I think too much about lists when I make them. I put, I put, I overthink things and make it, make it more than what it should be. These ones, I just went through all my cases, every single knife I own, and I picked my personal current favorites. I think it's gonna rub off really well with all you guys. I think there's a knife in here for everyone and a lot of different price ranges. There's expensive knives, there's mid-price knives, there's budget knives. So great prices, great knives, all the best action. Let's get into it and today we're going to start off with thumb studs we're going to start off with one that everybody knows and likes you should love it it's the Savibi Sakoke. and obviously so one more thing when i to hit on here i'm talking about thumb studs clearly this has a front flipper as well and the front flipper works great um nothing wrong with that i'm just hitting on my favorite aspect of each knife in terms of the deployment method and i'm kind of just categorizing them how i want so let me know what you guys think of this at the end and of course let me know what i left off i'm not going to go over prices or anything specific because there's a lot of knives it's going to be long i don't want it to be too long of a video so let's get going that's all i got to say the savivi sakoke Perfect thumb studs, perfect placement, very smooth, so, so satisfying. Middle finger flick is fantastic. It's a Ray Laconico design. It's a Civivi price. It's hard to beat this in the budget realm, guys. An absolute amazing knife, the Civivi Sakoke with fantastic thumb studs. And uh, next up here is another highly over underrated knife. Uh, this is the Kaiser Doberman. Now, the thumb studs on this make it phenomenally well in the action department, but the the, oh, the bearings on this, multi-row bearings, so stupid smooth. Once you break that detent, this thing just like powerfully glides out. It's so, so good. Some people don't like this design. I love it. Ergonomically, everything about this knife just works. Uh, pocket clip's a little harsh, but the action is what we're focusing on here. The action on this knife is so stupid, stinking, great, buttery, everything you want. It's really, really good. The Kaiser Doberman, especially with those thumb studs. Love the thumb studs on the Doberman. And uh, one more Kaiser here in this category, and it is the Huntsman. And you did you see that thing? Did you see it swing out with all the power. You can middle finger flick it, and that is really, really enjoyable too. But the power generated from this thumb stud is insane, and it's so good. The, the weight balance on this is really good, but you really feel the weight in the force when you kick this blade out. It is just, oh my God, it's so good, so satisfying. Such a wild out there design. Just a beautiful knife. Um, of course, I'm gonna link everything that's in stock, guys. I don't know if all these are gonna be in stock. We got a lot of knives to go over, but I'll do my best. But man, oh man, that is literally some of the best Kaiser action I have ever experienced in my life. And one of the, if not the most unique design to ever come out of Kaiser. Love the Huntsman. Uh, back to an American-made basic here with these thumb studs. This is the Hogue Decca. Um, the thumb studs on the Decca are arguably the best thumb studs you can have on a knife. I'm not going to call them the best because, of course, there's a lot of different thumb studs. But I love how much those the lines there and the just the, the milled area, how much that bites my thumb. And how easy it is to just flip that blade out. And man, oh, man. Oh, 
It is so good, so smooth. This is obviously a deck that I have taken apart, put some EDC goat scales on, done a lot of my own stuff too, but I'm telling you guys, it is so worth it. Customizing a knife and making it your own is a really, really fun experience. I'm actually doing that right now with a Manix 2. I'm waiting for some applied weapons tech scales for my uh, Magna Cut blade. Really, really excited about that. But this Deca here is an absolute banger of an American-made knife. Always love a Deca. There will always be a Deca in my collection. And because of that amazing thumb stud action, that's a huge part of why it's not going anywhere. Now, if you want something a little more in the budgety realm, this here's another good option, the Kershaw Iridium. Now, of course, this has great crossbar lock action too, but for me, the thumb studs are placed in the perfect spot. They're the perfect type of thumb studs for this knife. And man, oh man, it is just so, so good. So smooth. The Iridium is easily one of the best knives to ever come out of Kershaw. As well as the Launch 19. I'm in love with the Launch 19 right now. And then there's not going to be any autos in this uh, list. This is all manual knives. Uh, but the Launch 19 is also a fan phenomenal out-the-side automatic if you're looking for that. Uh, but this Kershaw Iridium here is just, for, from a budget standpoint... It's hard to beat it. You can, there's definitely, there's plenty. There's always going to be other knives out there that are as good or some would consider better. Uh, but this is just a very, very safe bet, especially if you're a big Kershaw fan, you want to stick with the Kershaw name. Uh, look no further than the Iridium here. Love, love, love this model. And I'm also really digging the other versions they've come out with. That There's a Sheep's Foot or a Warrencliffe Blade that is uh, very, very attractive, but all of them have phenomenal thumb stud action. And last here, oh, one more little thing. So at the end of each list, I'm going to bring to you guys my current favorite knife when the, with the type of deployment that we're talking about. And in this category, we're talking thumb studs. And my current absolute favorite that I am in love with, it's very new, so I may have just kind of just been like love at first sight type deal. But this right here, the Caviso Lambert Rain Round 3. The thumb stud action on this thing is insanely good. And first of all, we are talking an insanely beautiful knife with an insanely slicey edge. Everything about it is insane. It's just so stinking good. Um, the thickness of this handle, everything about this, the way it sits in my hand, it just, it makes the thumb studs that much easier to access. And it's just perfect for me. It really is. This is currently one of my favorite knives in my collection. And I, like I said, I know it's new. Um, but it's everything I look for in a knife. It, it's, a, it's an excellent design. It's excellent ergos. It has some of the best thumb stud action I have ever, ever experienced on just a, you know, a standard production knife. I can't call it high-end production knife. I mean, this is a $279 to $299 knife. Um, but it's just so satisfying and everything about it is just an absolute home run. One of the best exclusives Caviso's ever come out with, in my opinion, this particular round here with the flipper delete, with the drop point blade and the thumb studs and the shipwreck carbon fiber. There's still some of these left. The shipwreck carbon fiber is gone, but there are some other carbon fiber variants left. Um, I would highly recommend getting in on these if you love a good, beefy thumb stud folder. This thing is an absolute home run out of the park and into the ocean. It is phenomenal. That's thumb studs. Next up, let's talk flippers. Let's do flippers. And let's start here with one that may be a surprise to people. This is the Beg Knives Astio. Now, regardless of what anyone thinks about the design of this knife, first of all, I think it looks amazing. I think a lot of Beg Knives look amazing. They stick to what they do good. Those, those, just those harsh, drastic, artistic lines that just, oh, they just look great. And not only is this a great looker, it is a slicer. But what it also is, is an amazing flipper. Um, very, very smooth. Love the flipper on this. They did a really good job of rounding it all off so it doesn't mess with your finger. Very nice detent. And it's just, yeah, it's fantastic. The Beg Knives Astio, a handful of bad assery. Definitely one I would recommend checking out uh, if it's a design that uh, fits your fancy. Next up here, we got a couple concepts to take a look at. This one here... This is the Concept Integra, and I'm telling you guys, this is one of the smoothest concepts I've ever handled. The flipper here 
is rather minimal, but it, it has kind of a weird feel to it in a great way. You just kind of push it in and, oh, it is just butter, butter, butter. Uh, just fantastic. Love the flipping action on this. You know, this, this is one that will take a second to kind of get used to because you can miss this. I'm not going to say it's like the perfect flipper tab design, but the flipper action is just, it's on point. It couldn't be any better. Literally perfect action for what you're getting on this. Oh, it's so, so good. The Concept Integra. One more concept to take a look at here, designed by my buddy Paul Monko. This here is the Concept Cosmos. And this is an example of a flipper tab design. Perfect. Like this flipper tab could have been a disaster, but instead they put perfect jimping. It's a perfect angle. It rockets the blade out and it is just so satisfying. So, so satisfying. Also has great ergos and a really nice blade. Very versatile blade with that kind of, uh, it almost reminds me of like a some type of bird bill. Like it's just a, it's just a really cool, different looking blade. Nice and slicey, aggressive tip, but the flipping action, that's where it's at. Uh, such, such amazing flipping action. Very satisfying. Love the flipper tab design. Very awesome design in general from Paul. Keep them coming, buddy. You're killing it. Uh, very, very nice action. Concept has been one of the more impressive companies for me lately. In terms of new companies that have been handling a lot, their action has been on point. This one here, the Kaiser Gavel, is probably the most surprising flipper I've ever handled in my life. Because when I got this, I remember when I was doing the unboxing on this, I thought this was going to be a hot mess. I was expecting this to be a complete disaster. And it couldn't be any better. Like it literally could not work any better. This gavel is one of the most addictive flipper tabs I've ever handled. Just because everything about it tells you it's going to suck. And then everything about it is amazing. It is so good. Like minimal flipper tab perfection. I'm not kidding you guys. It, it literally doesn't get any better than this in terms of a minimal flipper tab that is a breeze, a piece of cake. So enjoyable to deploy this blade. Uh, the Kaiser Gavel is it if you're looking for uh, a minimal flipper tab and also just a really nice solid little design like this is just Mark Perez killed this design. Love the Kaiser Gavel. It is definitely in the running for a knife of the year spot uh, in its price category for me. This is this was a home run from the get go. Love the brass. Love the burlap combo. Uh, excellent little knife with again just buttery buttery smooth action and an excellent flipper tab. Kaiser Gavel is a winner every day in my book. Now, next up here, we have the Thunderbird, the Vostied Thunderbird. But now, this is not any Vostied Thunderbird. This is the smallest version. It's technically not called the Mini. It's kind of confusing. If you go on their website, you just see a bunch of Vostied Thunderbirds. But there's three different sizes now. Three different sizes. Uh, this blade length here is just under three inches. But the, the big difference with this size, listen to the detent. It, there's like a click. Now, this is a Trek lock, mind you. So normally, button locks, they don't have that. They don't sound like that. This one does. There's a, there's a couple other ones that we're going to touch on here in a bit. Um, but this thing is just the most satisfying. Oh, I some of the best flipping action I've handled in a very long time. Probably the best flipping action ever out of Vostied. Like, this is... Perfection and it also has extremely good ergonomics, a great blade, some really cool carbon fiber, and again, that Trek lock. I love me a good Trek lock, it is amazing. The Vostied Thunderbird, technically, it's not the mini, but I call it the mini, so there you have it. Um, an absolutely amazing knife, and the detent makes all the deployment methods so enjoyable. Love, love, love this piece, the Vostied Thunderbird. The mini version. Uh, next up here, we have an oldie but a goodie, the Civivi Cogent. Uh, this is still one of the best pure flipper button lock knives you can get. And uh, one of the two, because the very next one I think is the best flipper button lock knife under $100. This is probably the second best flipper button lock knife. And just in terms of action for me, 
I, I love it. It's it's very clean, very smooth, extremely satisfying, and particularly this wood handled version with the black blade. I'm in love with this. Like this is the cogent that I want only with a blacked out C because you know, you know I was going to say that. Uh, but yes, perfect flipping action in the Savivi cogent. I went to say Vosti, then I went to say Costco, I think. That was very weird. It's late at night. Give me a break. Uh, next up here, this here is the Sencut Serene, and this is, without a doubt, I'm telling you right now, guaranteeing you, this is the best button lock flipper you can get under 50 bucks. The best one ever. There's there's nothing else that's even close. The Sencut Serene is also one of the, the best knife ever under $50. Like, it is amazing, and so much of it has to do with this action. It is beyond, it, it's beyond perfect. It is for, for under 50 bucks, it's just, yeah, it's perfect. It, it, it I, I don't know what else to say about it. I mean, you've handled as many knives as I have and you come across something like this for this price. Um, I don't care if it has D2 steel. Give me D2 steel all day for under 50 bucks on a knife like this. I'll take it, I don't care. Um, very clean design, excellent ergos, but just, just literal perfection for a button lock flipper. It is, it's amazing. It is, it's the Sencut Serene. And if you don't have one, you better buy one because this is, this is the perfect measuring stick for what a damn good knife is for under 50 bucks. It doesn't get any better than this. The Sencut Serene. Uh, next up here, we have another new one for this year with a flipper tab that just knocked it out of the park. This is the Giant Mouse Ace Biblio XL. Now, you guys know I already love the Ace Biblio XL in general. For the ergos, for the blade shape, for the Vox effect, for everything about it, it's, it's an amazing knife. But the flipper on this thing and the smooth action in general, it's like a push-button style flipper, which I love. And the middle finger flick is also really, really good. Again, I'm not highlighting the, the cutout on this blade, but it is amazing and it works great. But the flipper tab on this one is just a lot better than the original Biblio, in my opinion. It's it's just, it, this is as good as it gets in terms of the Biblio. It's a bigger knife, perfect flipper design, and just extremely smooth, satisfying action on the Giant Mouse Ace Biblio XL. And we're not done with Giant Mouse. We got one more here. Um, if you want a slightly smaller knife, look no further than the Ace Tribeca from Giant Mouse. Um, Oh, hand-hugging ergos, but the detent on this guy, oh my God, this detent, oh, it is like the perfect detent. It is definitely, I, again, you guys are going to hear me use the word perfect, and there can be more than one that's perfect, and this is one of them because, and it also works really good for the middle finger flick, but the flipper on this is just, oh man, oh man, oh man. Oh, so satisfying. The jimping on the flipper tab too is also perfect because the, the design of the flipper tab, it'd be very easy to slip off it if it didn't have this jimping, but it does. It's not an issue. It's so damn good. I love it. One of my favorite giant mouse knives ever. Probably my second favorite right behind the, the Biblio XL, uh, the Ace Tribeca out of giant mouse. Amazing, amazing stuff coming out of giant mouse knives. And uh, we do have a Kaiser to talk about in this category, and it's the Brat, because the flipper tab on this thing and the overall action is just one of the best ever from Kaiser. One of the best actions on a Kaiser knife ever. Obviously, there's a lot of good Kaisers with great action, but this one here really does, it does kick it up a notch for me. Um, in terms of a pure flipper for a button lock, uh, this probably comes in at third, right behind the Serene and the Cogent for me. Uh, it's just great. It is so, so satisfying. Uh, sits really well in the hand. The ergos are also good. Uh, really like the width and thinness of this blade. Makes it very, very slicey. Um, yeah, it's a home run. It's it's just another fantastic design from Ozzo. Um, and one of my favorite Kaiser knives ever and there may be some specials coming out with this maybe uh maybe with carbon fiber instead of g10 or maybe titanium i don't know uh keep your ears open for that there may be something like that coming around 
Uh, next up here, we you can't talk about amazing flippers without talking about this right here, the Protec Mordax. It is one of the best flipping button lock knives ever, especially for American made. For American made, I'm about to show you the three best. Yeah, three best, three best. Uh, there's one more from Protec, which you can probably already guess what it is. Then there's one more American made one that I guarantee you, you're probably not going to be able to guess unless you've, you watch my channel regularly, you've seen it. Um, but the Mordax is like an icon when it comes to flipper, flipper button locks. Uh, it is an icon in the knife industry. Uh, one of the first, one of the best. It's amazing. The Protec Mordax, you can't go wrong with it. The problem is just finding it. Um, and then next up, you probably know what's coming, the Kaiser Malibu. Um, you know, whether you like the Mordax or Malibu more, that's completely up to you. That's a size and ergonomics, personal preference, um, as well as aesthetics. But they both have amazing detents. And the detent and the flipping action on the Malibu is better, in my opinion. And I don't even really think it's up for debate. Personally, I think the Malibu is just clearly better. But the Mordax is also amazing. But the Malibu is, again, it's another one. It's, it's an icon. It's an icon when we're talking button lock flippers. Uh, Protec nailed it. They just nailed it. They did everything right with this. And uh, there is a reason why you see it in every single video pertaining to flipper button locks or just button locks in general because it is that good. But the action itself is just ridiculously smooth and so, so satisfying. The Protec Malibu. Now time for the one that a lot of you have probably not heard of unless you watch my channel. Uh, this one here, this is the High Water Knives Estuary made in the Salt Lake City Utah area. Um, say what you want about the aesthetics. It's not for everyone. Some people don't like it. I will say one negative thing about this knife. I've said it before. I hate this. This this pocket clip is trash. But the knife itself is incredible. And when it comes to just the action of the knife, this is easily as good or better than the Mordax and the Malibu. And I truly mean that. I, I couldn't be more serious. This right here it's it's just it's next level um it is absolutely perfected it is so stinking good and i'm really excited to see there is a there is more in the works from high water i saw some pictures on his instagram looked like some titanium versions were coming this one here is an aluminum handle but looks like he's working on some titanium models that i think are going to be a home run uh this knife in general is a home run like i I'm completely satisfied with this knife, minus the pocket clip. Um, it's just, it is, man, oh man. The way this thing fires out, I'm actually reminding myself, it actually fires out harder than the Malibu or the Mordax. Like, this is ridiculously impressive. Um, razor sharp, wicked slicey blade. Uh, it is an amazing one. The Edgewater Knives Estuary. Now for my favorite flipper tab. Um, this is easily one of my all-time favorite flipping knives and one of my favorite knife models in general. If I had to have a top five, this knife would be in it. And it's this guy right here. The Caviso Sharp by Design collaboration flipper tab version of the Mini Tempest. It is just next level because for me, the, the overall design of the Mini Tempest, because originally they came out with front flippers, so you had a front flipper tab here and there wasn't a flipper there. Just the design of the knife, oh my God, the design of the knife in general is just beyond clean. Like this is, this is one of the best knife designs I've ever seen in my life. It's just perfect, a perfect balance of blade to handle. Um, just sexy everything. This thing is next level in terms of just overall design execution. But then when you add the Brian Nato detent system, which is a very, very different detent, it's not a detent ball, it's a milled piece of steel right in there that's hard to show you, but there's not a detent ball in there. It's a little milled piece of steel with a unique shape, and it is just an experience. It is an experience. It's so damn good. Um, I have never handled a 
Brian Nado, sharp by design knife, and never thought to myself, that's some of the best action I've ever handled on a knife. Like it is just absolutely stinking perfect. Um, I love the Mini Tempest. It is literally, when, it, when, when we're talking production folders uh, under $500, this, this actually might be my favorite. This is easily in the top three, probably second or first if I really had to sit down and think about it. Um, I just love everything about the Mini Tempest. Uh, front flipper version and the flipper version, but since we're talking flippers right here, this one is my favorite, takes the cake. And they are still available to my amazement, these are still in stock at Caviso. There's a link below, but I just, yeah, I, the, I don't know what the world's coming to because that, that should not be in stock. It should 100% be sold out. It's perfect. The Caviso Mini Tempest with a flipper. Now, next up, we're talking blade cutout slash thumb holes. And we're going to start, this is a much shorter list. Uh, yeah, the CGRB Pyrite, it, it has to be on the list. It is, everything about this action is just super fidgety, super good. Uh, love this knife in general. Again, another one of like the best budget knives ever, especially in that 50-ish dollar range. I think this is still, it might be $49.99 actually. It's either $49 or $55. I, I really can't remember. There's just too many to remember. Um, but when you're talking that 50-ish dollar range, Easily one of the best ever. There's so many different options, though. There's there's inlays. There's different colors. There's this, that, and the other. But it doesn't matter if you get something special or just the budget version. This thing, it feels good in the hand. It looks amazing. And again, the action. That's what we're sticking to today. Uh, super smooth. Very, very easy to handle and fidget with. But just incredibly smooth action. Love the blade cutout. Love this knife. One of the best knives ever. The Civivi... Civivi. There's too much, guys. The CJRB Pyrite Warney. It's like 11 o'clock at night, and I'm trying to power through this video because I got to drive in front of me tomorrow. So just uh, bear with me here. I, I think so far I've been very accurate with a couple slip ups. Uh, next up here, we got another budget knife. This is the Sencut Mims. And this action, again, I've said it before, I'll say it again. If you're looking for a knife under $50 and you want the best and you want to just pick a model and have it be the best, uh, it is a send cut. There, there is no competition to send cut when you're talking $50 or less and just the widespread consistency of greatness. And the MIMS is right up there as one of the best. Um, this is probably second or third behind the Serene for me in terms of favorite send cuts. This thing is just absolute perfection. And the middle finger flicking action on this, oh, is so stinking crisp. So crisp, so fast, so powerful. It is just amazing. And I also love the lines on this. Very, it kind of looks like just a... Just real fast, quick, darty lines that are just so satisfying. And the flipper is actually, this could have easily been in the flipper category as well. It's that good. Um, everything about this is so solid, so amazing. The Send Cut Mims, uh, definitely one of the best Send Cuts ever made. Uh, next up here, we have a newer brand, at least to my channel. It's been around for a while. I just haven't really experienced them until recently. Uh, this is the Asher Spyro, and this guy right here, I know I'm not hitting prices on everything, but for what you are getting here, S35VN, excellent deep wire carry clip. Um, we have a very nice liner lock, but this right here, that blade cut out and that action, all that for like $87.50, I think it was, $87, stupid, stupid, stupid good. Um, oh, I could do that all day. And this liner lock in here, oh, it's just milled out to perfection, that little beveling there. Yes, please. Yes, please. Give me seconds. Um, this thing is fantastic. Super slicey blade, great steel, excellent plunge grind. Uh, manufactured by um, Fish. What's the fish? Uh, dead fish? Or, um, yeah, darn it. Um, it's it, it, it's slipping my memory. Um, I haven't reviewed a lot of their knives. Um, it's something fish. Tell me in the comments, and you can call me a moron because I should know that. But something fish uh, was the manufacturer of this knife for uh, for Asher, and they did they just knocked it out of the park. So so good. The uh, the Asher knives Spyro liner lock version with a blade cut out. 
incredible action. Just absolutely buttery good. Uh, next up here, this right here, this guy, the Spyderco Para 3. Uh, this right here, in my opinion, has infinitely better action than the Paramilitary 2. Now, I will preface with I also like the Paramilitary 2 better still because I prefer the size of it, but the action, the middle finger flicking action on this is so snappy. And then just the drop shitty goodness is so good. And you can also thumb flick it, but again, for the Para 3, I do definitely prefer the middle finger flick because it's just a perfect detent, detent. This is the CQI version of this. I don't know if they have a mark on that somewhere to indicate that, but a while back they did go back through and kind of do an update to the Para 3. Um, and I don't know if it was directly revolving the action, um, but yes, that is just so stinking good. One of the best blade cutouts universally on a blade ever is the Spidey Hole. Whether you're talking the Para 3, PM2, Manix 2 or another knife you're going to see here in just a second. Um, it's just, yeah, it doesn't get much better in terms of a blade cutout or a thumb hole than the Spyderco Spidey Hole. And it's extra good on the Spyderco Pair 3. Now, before we get to that other Spyderco, let's talk about this one here real quick. This is the Devo Knives Mash V 2.5. Now, this one, unfortunately, is sold out everywhere. Um... I don't think, you, you'll probably find it on the secondary market at some point, like on Reddit or you, Instagram or something. Um, but yeah, what, what you have here is just an amazing knife, but the blade cut out in the detent. The detent on this thing is money. Absolute money. It is so, so good. Um, one of a lot of really good knives to come out of Devo Knives lately. Uh, Devo has been on quite a run the past year. Um, between the mash, the growler, the stout, the nip, they've just, oh, they've been killing it. Uh, and this is definitely one of my favorite ones from them. An excellent design with a great detent and buttery smooth action. The Devo Knives Mash V2.5. And now the last version with a blade cutout is this guy right here. And this is my favorite. This is the Spider Co. Shaman. Uh, you just cannot beat the Shaman, in my opinion. And this one in particular, granted, I have taken the handles from one Shaman and the blade of another Shaman and kind of put them together. But this thing has just broken in to where it is the my smoothest Spider Co. Well, my second smoothest Spider Co. behind my Swish Buoy. Or, yeah, Swish Buoy. Um, this, though, is just... I love the Shaman. I love the Ergos. I love the blade shape. And I love this perfectly perfectly broken in action uh some people may not like the compression lock i love the compression lock and on this particular shaman it's the best compression lock there is so so good i'm trying to time it right to get it to there we go yeah so good so satisfying so smooth one of the best knives that's ever broken in for me actually is the spider co shaman and it is just an absolute beauty with some of the best action I have on all my knives, the Spider Co. Shaman. And now we have two categories left. We got front flippers and then we got crossbar locks. I kind of broke crossbar locks out separately because there's a lot of different crossbar locks that can really, really change the action. But first let's talk front flippers and let's talk the best budget front flipper I have personally ever handled. And it's this guy right here, the Kaiser Clipper. Now, what makes this thing perfect? Uh, first of all, I love the design. Uh, the design is absolutely fantastic. Uh, Kingsford Knives absolutely killed this. I, I, I'm almost positive it's Kingsford. Again, I apologize if that's wrong, but I'm almost positive it's Kingsford. Anyway, okay, the front flipper here. Uh, this is like a perfect front flipper for me. Uh, perfect jimping, rather minimal, perfect angle that the tab is coming out on so you can get that really easy, really smooth and snappy roll that just pops that blade out so quick. Um, and it, man, oh man, it is a banger of a blade design too. Very, pretty unique blade shape. Really pretty unique blade shape. I haven't seen a lot like this, if any, really. Uh, love the blade shape, love the knife, but of course, love that action. Reach around approved. 
amazing front flipper on this. When you're looking at knives under $100, this one here is right at $100. It's like $99. Or, no, I think this is $89, actually. $89. There's also a, a version with micarta and a black blade for, I believe, $69. So either way, you can't go wrong. They both have amazing action, phenomenal detent, the best budget front flipper you can get, the Kaiser Clipper. Now, let's talk about a knife that's very near and dear to me. You guys knew it was coming at some point in this. Uh, the Vosti Thornton. And the front flipper was one of the biggest aspects of this knife. Now, the, the thumb studs are good. Um, I have no issue with thumb studs whatsoever. But the front flipper on this is my favorite deployment method. I, I love this. It is easily reach around approved. And I also think it is a... Uh, rather perfect front flipper uh it, i just i really like the angle i got in here um the jimping i originally wanted a tighter jimping but this just worked it worked really well i have no issue with it i have yet to miss a front flip on this knife so i'm not going to complain about it i think it's really really good and what's making me even happier is that these knives have gotten out in the hands of so many people now and they also love it so that really, really makes me happy. Um, but yes, from a front flipper standpoint, I do think this is one of the best front flipping knives you can get, especially under $100. Under $100, you're going to be very hard pressed to find a better front flipper than this knife. With the exception, and I will even say it, I do think the front flipper on this clipper is better than mine. Only be, it's also a pure front flipper. If you want something with thumb studs and more deployment options, then definitely go the Thornton. But pure front flipper and a little classier of a knife, I, I will give it. The clipper, the clipper rocks it. The clipper is amazing, and I love that front flipper. But I also think this is one great front flipper on the Vosti Thornton and a slightly bigger blade. Um, so yeah, that's it guys. If you've bought a Thornton, first of all, thank you very much, but also let me know what you think of it in the comments. I'm always loving to hear feedback. Uh, time to up the ante though and get one that is uh, a little more expensive. This here is the Jack Wolf Knives After Hours Jack and I'm telling you what guys, Jack Wolf Knives needs to make more front flippers because this thing here has a, another nice, rather minimal front flipper, but it is just absolute lightning, lightning in a bottle. I love this front flipper. And the, it's not just the front flipper, right? It's the action in general. Uh, this blade rockets out. It's such a light blade and the, the, the difference you get between middle finger flicking a light blade to a heavy blade is just amazing. It's, it's, it's like you're flicking out air, but it just comes out so, so fast. And it's such a nice, crisp thwack. Um, amazing action. I, I'm really all Jack Wolf knives, but honest, obviously, um, the, the, the locking knives, the, uh, the, the frame lock or the front flippers with uh, whatever type of lock they have on it is going to just be a very different type of action on this as opposed to uh, one of their slip joint knives. Slip joints is a whole different world. And if it really, I, I don't have any slip joints in here because the only slip joint I would ever really consider is a Jack Wolf in terms of the action. So take that for what it's worth. Uh, but in terms of front flipper, middle finger flicking, and just... Oh, just just smooth perfection. Uh, Jack Wolf Knives is up there with the absolute best of them, and they are doing amazing things in the knife industry right now. Uh, next up here, we're going back to a name that everyone knows and loves, Kaiser with the Militaw. Uh, my runner-up for knife of the year and the best knife in its price category. Uh, the Militaw could also be in this list for the middle finger cutout, or the, the thumb hole cutout, the blade cutout, the little triangular thing right here. Uh, that works really well, but I also, I really love the front flipper on this. Uh, this knife is just ridiculously, oh, it's like, it, it's like it's a free swing out of that. Like the bearings are just, oh, it is so damn good. So, so fun to fidget with. Reach around approved. And it's a nice size too. I mean, this is not, this is not a small knife. Um, I would definitely consider this a, uh, a, 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 a big medium or even a large knife, depending on what you consider a large knife. Very, very nice size overall in the Militaw and amazing action. Well, again, definitely my favorite Kaiser of the year last year and one of the best Kaisers ever. And uh, next up here, we have one that isn't sold out, but I'm hoping there'll be more because this was an amazing one. Uh, the Pena Paramore, one that, you know, I'm not a big buyer of M4 steel. 
I prefer to stay away from it. And again, that's just me wanting stainless. That M4 is a phenomenal steel. I just, I usually try and go the stainless route. But I like this knife so much. The design of this was so clean and that front flipper was so damn perfect. Uh, I wasn't going to take the risk of Pena potentially not making them in a stainless steel. So I thought, you know what? Screw it. I'm going to get it. And I do not regret it one bit. Absolutely amazing front flipper. The action to get this guy out is effortless. And probably the best Pena front flipper he's come out with. And he's come out with so many. So many. You guys know. Um... That says a lot, and this is easily one of the best Peñas and one of the best front flippers I have ever handled, the Peña Paramore. Uh, next up, we have a Boker, which you don't always hear about, but this is obviously uh, a Boker very near and dear to me. This is probably the best Boker ever made. This is the Boker Urban Trapper, and let me tell you, when it... Ooh, oh, actually, that bounced back. I hope I don't start bleeding during the video. Um, the front flipper on here, kind of like the Mohawk front flipper going on, but, oh, it's just, it's too easy. It's too easy. It's very, very nice blade to handle ratio. Brad Zinker design. Uh, really, really nice ergos. Really cool, unique pocket clip. Kind of gets real big, but it also doesn't affect the ergos. Actually, I think it kind of helps the ergos. Feels really good in the hand, but that action is just next level Ooh, so good on that reach around. Ridiculously thin hollow grind makes for a very slicey blade. And yeah, just a joy, an absolute joy to front flip that blade out, the Boker Urban Trapper. And now it's time for my favorite front flipper. And uh, you've kind of already seen it, but what we have here is the Mini Tempest. And you guys, I, when I said this is one of my favorite knives ever, I mean it. Um, now, this one here is technically not a Caviso exclusive. Caviso does have just the front flipper versions, like what you see here. They do have just the front flipper version available, but it is not, you, you can't get it with the black and gold dark matter. This was an, the original drop from Brian Nadeau that I believe was, gosh, I think that was like two, two or three years ago now. It's been a minute. Um, but it is still just as amazing as it was. And you can still get it, like I said, they have them at Caviso just with different uh, different fat carbon inlays. And uh, I think most of them have just a raw titanium finish. Kind of like uh, kind of like the flipper version, only obviously it has a front flipper um, and it's more just the raw tie, but they're both bangers. The Mini Tempest is an absolute knife. If, if you're into buying the more expensive knives, these are in the, the $400 range. I think they might be a little under $400, um, but these things are just absolute. Oh my gosh, that detent system, that Brian Nato detent is good on anything you buy with it. Literally, you can't go wrong. Um, and again, it's just one of the best looking, best feeling knives ever with some of the best freaking action you will ever experience on a front flipper or a regular flipper over there. So yeah, definitely check these out. I'm, I'm my, my mind is literally blown. They're still available. Anyway, uh, last category crossbar locks. This is a stupid long video. Uh, let's keep it going. Uh, the only Benchmade you will see, and I just, I it's still great. I mean, I, I can't say I love Benchmade at this point, but the 940 is still one of the few knives they just do completely right. It's just still an amazing knife, uh, ridiculously smooth, still easily one of the smoothest crossbar locking knives I've ever handled that I still own. And I'm never going to get this, get rid of this one because I did have it in my pocket when I proposed to my wife. So yeah, it, it's sentimental, but uh, it is still just an amazing crossbar lock with a really nice, classy, unique design. I, I love the 940. I'm still a sucker for it. And I do think Benchmade is uh, still doing a really good job with this specific knife. And now we're getting into Kaiser. And this, th this is all about the clutch lock. And I'm going to bring out both of them right here. Uh, the Sheepdog and the Drop Bear are just about as good as you can get when you're talking the clutch lock. Um, whether you want a bigger, beefier, you know, hand-filling blade 
or a hand filling handle with a big beefy blade or if you just want that typical something more like more like the size of the bug out or the deca uh, the drop bear is amazing. It feels so good. And the ability to adjust the spring tension in the crossbar lock, which you can't see the holes, but there's there's holes down there. Um, and you take the scales off, you adjust the spring tension, and you get the perfect action you want. And there's something about the drop bear. The, the drop bear, I think, oh, it may very well be the best. The best Kaiser with the clutch lock. Really love the drop bear. And of course, the the sheepdog, like everything about the sheepdog, I will always love the sheepdog. And the clutch lock with the sheepdog, it's, it, it's one where I really do like to use the lock itself to open the blade. The thumb studs also work great. This These two knives could both be in the thumb stud category. But the clutch lock is just very different because you can't adjust that tension. I like to go stronger on the tension myself. But you let me know in the comments, do you like to go stronger, lighter, or right in the middle? For the clutch lock regardless of which way you go it's an amazing knife that brings amazing action to the table uh and now another one from asher this is another spyro but this is the crossbar locking spyro and this is designed by or not designed this is designed by asher uh manufactured by kunwu um and i'm telling you guys if you haven't handled a kunwu also something you should really, really, really look into because whatever you get from Kunwu is like top notch. Um, but they made this knife for Asher and this is incredible crossbar locking action. Uh, very, very satisfying. Uh, just perfect spring tension, perfect studs, perfect everything. Makes for extremely, extremely smooth action. Very, very nice and satisfying. And yeah. That's that, the Spyro, Ash, the Asher Spyro crossbar lock. Yeah, really, really good. Um, and now we are getting into Microtech. And you already know, guys, you already know the Ram lock. Because this stinking lock here, this is, for a while, for a hot second, this was my favorite crossbar lock ever. Like, it was, it was the best. Um, it was shortly uh, dethroned by what you're going to see here next. But not to discredit this because the Ramlock is still amazing. Uh, the MSI is one of my favorite knives out there. And this Ramlock is just next level. Absolutely next level. I think I will be getting a pair of EDC GOAT scales for this. Um, because it's just going to be so much better with those, uh, yeah, with those slightly beefier, more solid, more solid aluminum scales. Great stuff from Microtech with this Ramlock and this Amphibian. Oh, yeah, I got this at Blade Show West and uh, it was not cheap. It was like $400 or $450, but it was, it was my big purchase at Blade Show. And uh, <laughs> it's just a ridiculous knife and everything about it I love so much. Um, but primarily the action is just so good. The lockup is great. And uh, that Ram lock is just next level in terms of just ergonomic perfection for a crossbar lock. I mean, really, this the way they milled these cro the 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 we'll call them the crossbar studs. Um, it's just it's more like a tactical piece of equipment. Like it is just oh, it's so so good, so satisfying, so fun to fidget and deploy and use. Uh, just a great great lock from Microtech and makes for some damn good incredible action. The Amphibian, the MSI with the Ram lock. Get them if you find them because they're hard to get a hold of. And now we've come to the last knife in the list. If you guys are still watching, thanks for sticking around. This has been a lot longer than I even thought it would. I tried to go fast, but just a lot of knives. Uh, this guy is coming out later this year. It's from Winter Blade Co. And it is the Severn. But this here is by far and away the smoothest and I mean buttery smoothest crossbar lock you will ever come across. Um, I don't know how easy these are going to be able to get because the, the pre-orders have already sold out. There's going to be some extra, but I don't know exactly how many. Um, but this crossbar lock here is just, it's different. It's different in the best way. 
And it is obviously a winter blade coat design. You, you see that design language in here. It's so different, so good. Fills the hand, a really nice blade to work with. But the action on this thing, the action, you would think it's magnetized just on how smooth and different it is. The, the only magnet in this knife is on the thumb stud here. You, it's a little magnet you can push out and move to the other side. But other than that, there is no other magnets in this. And there's just something about it you want to think there is because it just... It operates in a different way. It's so smooth. I can tell you it all day, but you, it's one you really have to handle. It really is one you gotta handle and feel and just and just feel the difference. But in terms of a crossbar locking knife, this is by far and away the best action I've ever handled. And to be honest, if I was, I, I am a gambling man. Um, I I wouldn't put my money on ever coming across a better one. I mean that. It is, it's that good. Um, and I've got no affiliate links for this. I'm not going to make any money if you guys buy one of these. I'm just telling you, this is the best crossbar locking knife I've ever handled because it is different and it is amazing. So that's that. That is the list. Let's pull out my favorites here. Let's bring them back out and take a look at all of my favorite smoothest knives with some of the best action I have come across. Woo! Oh man, oh man, that rain kicks. Uh, so good, so stinking amazing. Guys, this, this, these knives right here, all this, let me know what you think. Which one was your favorite? Um, if you had to pick one on the table right now, what would it be? But tell me what knives I missed. There's so many knives with amazing action out there. These are my five favorites. Um, I like big knives, I cannot lie, but more than anything, I love great action. And you guys just saw a lot of it. It was long. I hope you enjoyed it. If you want to have a lot of fun, watch it again and make a drinking game out of it. Every time I say action, you will be hammered. I would recommend drinking water for that. <laughs> That's it, guys. I really hope you enjoyed it. I am done. I'm going to bed. I hope you have a great rest of your day. And until the next one, I'm out.